Welcome back. Of the 6,720 students sitting the Bahamas General Certificate of Secondary Examination, or BGCSE, 1,552 achieved at least a C in math, English, and a science, representing a 17.04% increase compared to how the numbers stacked up last year. Further, 2018 saw 25,045 BGCSE exam grades awarded. This, however, was a decrease over the 0.38% compared to 2017, which pulled in a total of 25,140 grades. A closer look shows that 490 candidates received at least a grade C or better in mathematics, English language, and a science, a decrease of 5.95% over last year's numbers. The total percentage of A grades this year is 8.9%, translating into 2,228 candidates. Bs accounted for 12%, that's 3,017 candidates. 27.2% or 6,811 of the candidates scored Cs, just about 22% scored a D, 14.2% got a E, 8.4% an F, 4.7% a G, and 2.4% a U. A U grade indicates a candidate has failed to show positive achievement in a subject. The total number of subjects offered this year was 27. The highest percentage of grades awarded then continues to be at a C. Like the BGCSE, the BJC is designed so that at least 80% of the candidates achieve grades A through G. That said, the ministry today revealed that candidates have more than met this goal, with almost 80% achieving grades A through E. This year marks the 26th sitting of the BGCSE exam and the 25th sitting for the BJC. Well, the first day back to the classrooms for tens of thousands of students, and for the most part, all appears to be well on most campuses. But as Education Minister Jeffrey Lloyd foreshadowed, September 3rd would meet the AF Adderley Junior High School still in repair mode. And Bahamas Union of Teachers President Belinda Wilson today confirmed this much to our news team. There's construction going on in the school. There are open trenches. There's, there's electricity. There's the, the yard is... is full of water. Um, the construction workers are here. There's heavy equipment in the yard. So it's not conducive, it's not safe, it's not healthy for the students or the teachers. So we're in discussions now trying to look at how do we um, find alternate sites so that school can um, get to some sort of normalcy. Now, according to Mrs. Wilson, those teachers have been sitting in all morning and officials have been a meeting trying to resolve matters and looking for possible alternative sites. But if you ask her, the work will take weeks to complete. I don't think the work will be completed at the end of this week. In fact, um, I would have, as looking at the work and having some discussions, I think the work will, will not be ready before probably the third or fourth week of October. Um, with um, work that has been done to various schools of this magnitude, I, I think the work, there's definitely a need for at least another six weeks. As for the Eva Hilton Primary School, the BUT president gave this update. Eva Hilton, they, they had major renovations, but um, the um, contractors, as we would have discussed with them last week, they cordon off the areas to prevent the students from moving about in those areas. Um, the, the classrooms were ready, the ones that they were able to use. Um, the children were there, the teachers were working, and um, they're making the best out of their situation. And for schools over in Grand Bahama? Walter Parker in Grand Bahama, um, they have some work that's being done there to the physical plant, and so they're looking at, they looked at an alternate site if needed, and their schools will, their school will be dismissed um, early for the rest of the week to ensure that the contractors finish the work that they're doing. Um, Martin Town Primary School, there's some work being done there, so I'm going to get an update on their work um, sometime today. Mrs. Wilson was on a walkabout with the Education Minister this morning, visiting several schools, namely C.V. Bethel, H.O. Nash, Eva Hilton, T.G. Glover, Doris Johnson, C.R. Walker. 
and AF Adelaide. Meantime, an electrical malfunction leaves the Rumkey All Aid School without a kitchen. As there are no direct flights into Rumkey, the school's off to a late start. Eight youngsters attend that school. Deep sadness blanketing a Grand Bahama family after an early morning accident ends the life of two school-aged boys a day ahead of the new academic year. The matter is under active investigations, but based on what authorities have so far determined, the teens were two of six passengers in a black Ford Escape that crashed into a utility pole on Saddleless Way and Forbisha Drive early Sunday morning. We understand the occupants exited the vehicle. Two of them touched the fence with a live electrical wire. They died on the scene. Minister Lloyd has assured prayers of comfort to the victims' families in their time of grief. The incident has prompted police to renew the call for the public to drive with due care and attention, adhere to the speed limits, and buckle up. The minister's comments came during a weekend press conference during which he announced the government's decision to team up with BTC to provide fiber optic infrastructure to all public schools, starting with those here in the capital. This installation will ensure that each school is a fully computerized smart school, that it will be fully integrated and will utilize the latest technology in all schools throughout this country to facilitate distance learning, personalized and individualized learning. This installation will further enable all students who are presently deprived of specialist teachers in math, science and other subjects to benefit from these distant learning modalities. In real time. The installation says the minister will also provide students with access to up-to-date learning facilities. The first phase of this digital transformation will include the technical infrastructure linking all of our districts, public schools, satellite offices, and these fiber optic cabling and other enhanced internet access services will be provided in graduated stages throughout our system. This means that at the end of this academic year, there will be full internet access, a fully equipped Wi-Fi network, a unified threat management security solution and mobility solutions for tablets and other devices. BTC's Chief Commercial Officer, Andre Knowles. It's a huge milestone for the Bahamas. We believe that access to fiber technology will allow educators to deliver new experiences to students through virtual classrooms as a testament to this five-year contract and to stimulate the ministry's e-learning initiatives, Minister Lloyd, BDC is proud to announce that we will also provide 2,500 tablets for teachers, primary school students, and preschoolers. Some 27 schools will be accommodated this month as part of the initiative. Next month, the plan is to tackle another 28. You're watching JCN News. Stay with us. This segment of the news was brought to you by Alive.